Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. My name is Yun Xiang Liu, usually I go by Leo. I'm a PhD student from Satellite Navigation and Sensing Lab at University of Colorado Boulder, known as Sense Lab, supervised by Professor Jim Morton. I'm also affiliated with Space Weather Technology Research and Education Center at CU Boulder. Given such a long title, I would like to highlight a few words here. The work I'm going to share with you today is improved automatic detection of GPS satellite oscillator anomaly using a machine learning algorithm. Here improved is compared to our previous work on satellite oscillator anomaly detection published on Navigation Journal recently. Here is the outline of this presentation. I will start with motivation and objective, followed by the introduction of satellite oscillator anomaly detection where I will talk about how we design features and appropriate machinery model for this task. Performance evaluation will be conducted, followed by the satellite oscillator anomaly detection results and observations. Finally, we will conclude our work and say something about the future. The motivation for detecting satellite oscillator anomaly is that it affects all the users that rely on its signal integrity especially for safety critical applications like aviation. So it is important to monitor its signal quality where automatic detection is desired. So the objective here is to conduct automatic satellite oscillator anomaly detection by using machine learning. This slide shows the oscillator anomaly detection procedure. In order to detect the oscillator anomaly, we have to distinguish it from ionospheric scintillation and no disturbance. Here, scintillation refers to rapid phase fluctuation of the signal propagating through ionosphere. To conduct this detection task, phase measurements are first input to feature engineering, where features that can differentiate among these three classes are constructed. Then the features are input to the machine learning algorithm to conduct the detection task. Here, random forest is the machine learning algorithm we implemented. In the next few slides, I will first talk about the feature engineering, followed by the introduction of random forest. And one thing I want to emphasize here is that the commonality between simulation and the oscillator anomaly is that both are phase disturbance, which will be considered in feature engineering. The first feature we apply is the power spectral density, PSD. The left plot shows examples of PSD for oscillator anomaly in blue, scintillation in orange, and uh, no disturbance in green. The no disturbance examples show lower power density across all frequencies, while oscillator anomaly and scintillation show high, higher power density at some frequencies over here. So we can use this to distinguish disturbed measurements from no disturbance. Here we use the entire PSD spectrum as well as the maximum value of PSD as features. So the next step is to construct features that distinguish between simulation and the oscillator anomaly where both are phase disturbance. The plot on the left shows an example of oscillator anomaly phase measurements. The phase measurements on L1 has the largest phase deviation, while L5 has the smallest. This is because the phase deviation caused by oscillator anomaly is proportional to carrier frequency. An example of simulation is shown on the right. Here, L5 has the largest deviation, while L1 has the smallest. This is because the phase deviation caused by simulation is inversely proportional to carrier frequency. So we can extract features that reflect this carrier dependence information to distinguish these two classes. Here is a scatter plot of L1 phase deviation versus L2 phase deviation. Given that oscillator anomaly is proportional to carrier frequency, a scatter plot of oscillator anomaly example should lie on this black line, while for simulation, it should follow this red line. So we plot the two examples in last slide here. Obviously, the oscillator anomaly example plot in black circles follow the black line, while simulation example in red crosses follow the red line. 
As a result, we can use phase measurements from two frequency bands and do a linear feed to find the slope, which call, we call the ratio. And by using this ratio, we can distinguish between scintillation and oscillator anomaly. This slide summarizes the feature engineering given the available frequency bands. Our work focuses on detecting anomalies on signal transmitted from GPS block 2RM and block 2F satellites. Features of PSD can be obtained from each available frequency band. For the ratios, dual frequency signal can only generate one ratio between L1 and L2, while triple frequency signal can generate three ratios, they are L1 versus L2, L1 versus L5, and L2 versus L5. Of course, triple frequency signal has an additional frequency band, which offers more information. And later on, a performance comparison between these two will be discussed. The machine learning algorithm we apply in this application is random forest. And this slide shows the building block of random forest called decision tree. The left plot shows a data set in feature domain where each sample has two features, x1 and x2. Three classes are shown in the plot with label A, B, and C. The black and the green dashed line are the decision boundary of a train decision tree. An illustration of this train decision tree is shown on the right. The classification procedure of the decision tree is to traverse from root to leaf and assign the leaf label to the data sample. For example, we have a new data sample with x1 equals to 4 and x2 equals to 3. First, x2 equals to 3 is larger than the threshold 2, may move to the left subtree. Then, x1 equals to 4 is larger than the threshold 2, will move to the leftmost leaf. So the label C is assigned to this sample. This is how a decision tree classifies a data sample. However, a single decision tree may not achieve desired performance. So we apply random forest. Instead of using only one decision tree, random forest utilizes k decision trees, where each decision tree makes the classification independently. Eventually, a majority vote is conducted, so random forest outputs the label with most votes. After the introduction of feature engineering and random forest, this slide shows the design satellite oscillator anomaly detection procedure. It involves two stages. Given the phase measurements as input, the first stage is to distinguish the oscillator anomaly from no disturbance and simulation. Here, features of PSD and the ratios are extracted and input to the random forest to, con to conduct the classification. Once the oscillator anomaly is detected, we move on to stage two to differentiate satellite oscillator anomaly from receiver oscillator anomaly. This is based on the fact that a receiver oscillator anomaly should simultaneously show up on measurements from multiple satellites in view, while a satellite oscillator anomaly is only present on the measurements from that particular satellite. So we can check if the same anomaly is observed from multiple satellites to identify whether it is a satellite oscillator anomaly. Since this second stage is a trivial process, we focus on performance evaluation of the first stage using random forest. And we call this detection method random forest. As I briefly mentioned at the title slide, random forest is the improved detection method. We have also implemented a method called SVM, RBF SVM, published on Navigation Journal recently. I won't go into details, just give you a quick overview. The main difference here is that SVM, RBF SVM involves two stages to detect the oscillator anomaly. The first stage detects phase disturbance use a linear kernel support vector machine. If disturbance is detected, we move on to stage two to distinguish oscillator anomaly from simulation using a radio basis function SVM known as RBF SVM. Due to historical reasons, the first stage is inherited from a simulation detection method, and it has problems on detecting small oscillator anomaly where a large number of small anomalies are missed in this stage. And then later on, we will show a performance comparison between random forest and SVM, RBF, SVM. 
The data we use in this application is 100 hertz phase measurements. The phase measurements are divided into chunks where each chunk is used as one sample in the data set. Each chunk is 30 seconds long and classified independently. In order to train and test the method, we manually inspect a large amount of data and labeled more than 700 simulation samples, more than 200 oscillator anomaly samples, and more than 400 no disturbance samples. For the purpose of evaluation, we randomly shuffle the data and use 90% of the data for training and 10% for testing. Here is the performance comparison. Accuracy, false alarm rate, F1 score are illustrated for both dual and the triple frequency signals. Here, F1 score is defined as the harmonic mean of recall and precision, and is usually used to evaluate the performance of an imbalanced data set which is the case of this data set. The last column is random forest, and second last column is SVM, RBF, SVM. The other five columns are machine learning algorithms used to compare against the random forest, where same features are used as input. First observation is that the method using triple frequency has better performance compared to the one using dual frequency signals because of the additional information offered by L5 frequency band. Second, random forest achieves the best performance outperforming other machine learning algorithm and SVM, RBF, SVM. As a result, we choose to use random forest to detect the oscillator anomaly. And one thing I want to emphasize here is that 98.4 and 99% detection accuracies shows that random forest achieves superior performance on not only oscillator anomaly detection, but also simulation detection. Given the accurate detection method, we apply this random forest to our database to conduct automatic satellite oscillator anomaly detection. SVM, RBF SVM is also applied for the purpose of comparison. We process data on five stations located at different places. Greenland, Alaska, South Korea, Puerto Rico, and Chile. The date and number of days of available are shown here. We process all the satellites from block 2RM in red and block 2F in blue. This slide shows the number of station-wise detected satellite oscillator anomaly. Number of detected events and average number per day are shown here. Immediately, we can observe that random forest detects way more number of events compared to SVM, RBF, SVM. This is because of the inherited phase disturbance detection in SVM, RBF, SVM missed a large number of small satellite oscillator anomalies. We were also concerned about such a large number of anomalies detected by random forest. Are these events genuine satellite oscillator anomaly? In order to verify these events, I randomly picked 200 events and found that 197 events are genuine satellite oscillator anomalies, which corresponds to a precision score of 98.5%. In performance evaluation, a precision score of 97.7% is obtained for random forest with dual frequency. These two values are very close to each other, indicating that random forest performs as expected. This slide shows the comparison of histogram on L1 maximum phase deviation, where we extract the L1 maximum phase deviation for each detected event and plot a histogram. And this plot shows the distribution fit of the histogram obtained by these two methods. The distribution of random forest shift to the left compared to SVM, RBF, SVM. This again shows that random forest can detect more small anomalies compared to SVM, RBF, SVM. So from now on, I will only show detection results using random forest. Remember that classification is conducted independently for each chunk of measurements at each station. In this slide, we show that there are events detected at different stations corresponding to the same satellite oscillator anomaly. This is based on the fact that if a satellite oscillator anomaly happens, it should show up on all receivers in view. For example, it may be simultaneously observed by station at Alaska and Greenland, 
if the satellite is in view for both stations, what the anomaly happens. In 2018, we detected approximately 30,000 events from these four stations. After post-processing, it turned out there are more than 5,000 anomalies observed by two stations, corresponding to two times 5,385 detected events. And there are more than 1,000 anomalies are observed by three stations, corresponding to three times 1,085 events. Surprisingly, there are five anomalies that are simultaneously observed by four stations. We will show an example in the next slide. In total, more than 6,000 anomalies are observed by at least two stations, showing the effectiveness of random forest on satellite oscillator anomaly detection. This slide shows one example of satellite oscillator anomaly from PRN10 observed by four stations on May 23rd, 2018. Again, I want to emphasize that these four events are detected independently. We found out that they correspond to the same satellite oscillator anomaly by post-processing. At this time, satellite PRN10 is located above Pacific Ocean, close to US coast. Although different noise is presented, they all have the same shape of anomaly. In addition, all the peaks are observed at the same time, 6.39 AM UTC. This observation shows that this is indeed a satellite oscillator anomaly. To further study the statistics, we also show that satellite-wise average number of detected events per visible day. Here, a visible day refers to a 24-hour period during which the corresponding satellite is in view with elevation above 20 degrees. A few observations from this plot. First, most anomalies are detected from block 2F satellites in blue. Second, not all block 2F satellites have large number of detected anomalies each day, for instance, PRN8 and 24. This may be based on the fact that PRN8 and 24 use cesium clocks, while other satellites in block 2F use rubidium clocks. More detailed investigation will be conducted in the future. Third, all block 2RM satellites in red show small number of detected anomalies each day. And finally, on average, more than 35 events are detected from PRN10 at Alaska. After station-wide statistics, we also want to know if the occurrence of anomalies is periodic or random. This plot shows the anomaly daily occurrence over Greenland for PRN1. Apparently, random occurrence pattern is observed, sometimes one anomaly each day, while other days show more than five anomalies per day. The same observation can also be found from PRN10. On some days, we detect one anomaly, while other days, we see more than 10 anomalies. This concludes our work on satellite or state anomaly detection. In conclusion, both performance analysis and detection statistics show that capability of random forest on automatic satellite oscillator anomaly detection. A second, preliminary detection results show that different satellites have different behaviors. And finally, accurate detection results show that the method not only detects oscillator anomaly, but also simulation with high accuracy. In the future, our next step is to first design satellite oscillator anomaly detection methods for other constellations. Second, apply this accurate detection method on more data, global characterization of GPS satellite oscillator anomaly and the simulation will be conducted. And finally, I would like to acknowledge that the presented work is supported by Space Weather Technology Research and Education Center at CU Boulder and a contract from Lockheed Martin. I would like to also thank Dr. Penny Exeteran for suggesting this research topic and providing guidance. That's all I have. Thanks.